meeting of the Veterans Military and Homeland Security Committee to order. And I'm gonna ask Senator Goodman to open us with an invocation. Thank you. Okay, we have five bills this morning, and everyone has a lot of committee meetings today, so we're going to need to move along quickly. And we're going to start with uh, Senator Ed Harbison, who has two bills, and there are uh, two people signed up to speak briefly, so go right ahead. The floor is yours. Two twenty-five is first. Two twenty-five is first. Okay, this is a veteran's license plate ally of the United States. Of course, uh, I, I can't say enough about our Korean allies that fought with us uh, in, in in the Vietnam War that I participated in. Uh, the soldiers, rock soldiers, were second to none, as I've said otherwise. And I think we last year, myself and uh, Representative Hitchens. Uh, passed a bill that would allow them to uh, share in uh, getting a license plate to commemorate their service and to respect their service uh, while fighting with the United States of America in a foreign war. We passed that bill, but in this instance, uh, there's not enough of, um, of the veterans who live here in order to participate, and they're really gung-ho. They're really enthused about uh, getting that tag and, and, and putting on. So what this tries to do is to try to make sure we moderate that number somewhat so they can be included and get that tag and I have with me Mr. Kim and his uh, ally here a, a veteran of, of, of the Korean War here and if you would like them to come up Madam Chair and, and say something we certainly appreciate it. Ms. Kim, Ms. Kim of course. Dear lady and gentlemen, I came in here testimony for you. I am uh, 1950 Korean War veteran. And then I retire veteran 1967. And then I minister of over 40 year church. Now is I am president of Atlanta Korean World Better. This time I really talking to you. Thank you very much. Last time he helpful for us. Uh, veteran license we got. This time we wanna really we need a veteran bigger tech. Would you please help your this matter? More proudly. Korean War, Veteran War, and the Peace of World. This generation, we are myself really one. Now is my age is ninety two year old. I hope I need. Speaker, veteran, Ted, would you please help for us? Thank you very much. Thank you. Also have uh, David Shem yeah. signed up. Ms. Kim. 
Your wife? Yeah. Okay. All right. So and, and I may add, uh, uh, they are now uh, citizens of this country. They live now in the United States of America, so that's why we're trying to carve out this particular uh, honor in their honor so they can be, uh, and they're really, really ex enthused about this. I mean, they just really excited about it, and I think it's, uh, if it's so see fit, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Chair, that we uh, accommodate them in the best way we can, and I believe our Veterans Committee have always looked out for our veterans, and I appreciate that, Madam Chair, and members of the committee. Do any members of the committee have any questions for the author? Okay, what's the will of the committee? Move to pass by Senator McNeil. I'll second. second by Senator Thompson. All in favor, raise your hands. Any opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. You can keep going, Senator. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the other bill I had is. And by way of explanation, I bring this to you. This bill creates a special license plate supporting num members of the United States Army Rangers. The funds raised by the sale of this special license plate will be disbursed by the National Ranger Memorial Foundation Incorporated in accordance with the requirements of Article 3, Section 9, Paragraph V1, etc. Georgia Constitution, this bill will not become law unless it receives a prerequisite two-thirds vote of the, uh, of, of the bodies, various bodies. Uh, Senator Gooch uh, passed a similar bill last session, but a former mayor, uh, Bob Portishev of Columbus, Georgia, came to me before he passed recently and asked me to pass his bill. And the part of it that was left out inadvertently, and it may be a way to work it that way, but this is a, kind of an insurance bill that we are passing to make sure that this say that they can raise money and share and split the uh, split the the, uh, the money raised from the the, the uh, sale of the tag. And that that's really what this is all about. And uh, I think it's good legislation, simple piece of legislation. Once again, we're trying to help our veterans, particularly the Rangers, an elite group of servicemen for the United States of America. And I would encourage your uh, support of this bill. If you have any question, I'd be glad to answer. But that's the that's it in a nutshell. Uh, uh, Ranger, former Ranger Colonel Bob Portishell, recently passed, asked me to do this, and this is what I'm doing in his honor. We don't have the piece in there that says they can participate participate in the uh, income for the tag among this nonprofit organization. Okay, Senator Thompson, you had a question? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you for bringing this forward. I do have a question, um, and I should know this as being the former chair of this committee, but uh, tell me about the National Ranger Memorial Foundation. What, what is that? How long has it been in business? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, probably as long as the Army. The Ranger is an extremely elite corporate organization. It's um, second to none. They got very elite members in it. Some people have won medals of honors. And uh, it is um, at Fort Benning at the National Amphitheater Museum as well. Uh, Colonel Biff Hatton, uh, members, some members of the people out there. It's extremely elite. And uh, there's a former friend of mine who recently deceased uh, was uh, one of the most outstanding trainers there uh, went around the country training people so I can assure you they're a very very proud organization as members of who behind me now can attest to and they really really deserve this honor to uh, have this distinction and sharing in the, the sale of that this is another esprit de corps for the members of the United States Army Rangers thank you Senator I was confused by one thing you said you said another bill had passed along these lines because there are specific requirements for especially license plates that require a certain number of people to and it's, it's slightly different this is a dealing with the revenue sharing and they and the ability to raise revenue from the sale of the tag for a nonprofit organization I don't think the first bill had that in it and this is what we are trying to accomplish in this one that's the difference but by, by way of full disclosure Senator Gooch did pass one last year with the license plate but it didn't have that uh, revenue sharing piece in it thank you mm -hmm. Any further questions from the committee? Okay, what's the will of the committee? To pass by Senator Goodman. Is there a second? 
Okay, Senator McNeil. All in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed? Okay, it passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you Madam Senator. Chair. Thank you, and members of the committee. Thank you very much. Okay, our next bill is House Bill 106, and I believe the chairman of the House Veterans Committee uh, has a conflict, and so Senator Thompson is going to present the bill. Am I correct? Thank you, Madam Chair. I bring HB 106 back to this committee. Um, when Representative Clark uh, presented this before, we had some questions around that. Um, fortunately, General Cardin, as well as Joe Ferraro, back answered those questions for us. What this basically does is add our state defense force uh, into the Georgia State Indemnification Program. If you remember, the members of the committee, we had questions about how this fund is appropriated. Um, that's been disclosed now. Melanie's here and she can support that as well. That each year out of our general fund, we have an appropriations, basically 430,000 that goes into that. Um, Without getting into the weeds of that, that had drawn down, we had, if you look at our appropriations, those of us that are on appropriations, we had a one-time a um, little over two and a half million that went in this year to replenish some of those funds. Um, there was some concern about adding in, or not concern, but questions about adding in our state defense force, what that might do as far as a burden on this. Um, the question still remains in the posture we have out there with our first responders and law enforcement. I believe everybody in this room can say that we support them. I think each and every one of us know that we have to make sure that that's a solvent fund and we'll do that through appropriations as necessary. It's a bigger question of how we appropriate that. You have the state defense force and we lean on them many times, especially when we have our national guard that is being deployed or activated to be able to handle some of the things that go on. That leaves an opening. That state defense force not only should be included in this fund, but it, it would be a dishonor and a disservice to those men and women, but also to those being our adjutant general as well as our uh, governor that is calling on these men and women to pick up the slack when this happens. So, Madam Chair, we could go all through the bill. I think he did a great job of that. Joe testified before. We have our answers before us. Those were distributed to each and every one of us. It helped me feel much more confident, and I'd ask at the appropriate time to see if we could, uh, the committee would move this forward. Okay, any questions for Senator Thompson? I think we, we heard this bill already. We don't need to go through the whole bill, but the question was about the funding, and I think that question's been adequately answered, and that's been confirmed by Ms. Debussy from the Senate Budget Office. So. Uh, Unless anyone has any questions, I um, certainly, I'm not voting as chairman, but I work with the State Defense Force all the time as a member of the Medical Association Medical Reserve Corps, and they respond to natural disasters, hurricanes, and whatever, and if there were an accident of some sort, that would certainly uh, be important to indemnify those folks. So I appreciate your presenting the bill, and I'm ready to entertain a motion. So Senator Harbison. Okay. Second, Senator Rett. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. All opposed? Okay. It passes unanimously. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you for clearing that up. And I'll, be carrying, that the bill on, I'll be carrying the bill on the floor for us. Great. Thank you. Okay, our next bill is House Bill 156. Representative Parsons, if you wouldn't mind coming to microphone seven and presenting the bill, I'd appreciate it. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair, and ladies and gentlemen of the committee. Uh, I have uh, House Bill 156. Uh, this is a uh, pretty straightforward proposition. I will say that it's a uh, legislation that I've worked on now for, oh, going on two years, I guess, at least a year and a half. And uh, I came about it when uh, some people from GMA, uh, Georgia Municipal Association, approached me and wanted to know uh, how they could get some help when they had cyber attacks, and especially these uh, ransom attacks. And as I'm sure you all know, you know, we've had uh, a great number of these attacks in the state of Georgia, even upon law enforcement, even these ransom attacks. Um, 
upon law enforcement, sheriff's departments, um, and it's a uh, it's a situation that's uh, you know I hate to say anything is impossible, but it's only apparently it's virtually impossible. Not no pun intended to actually track these people down because they hop from one uh, one server all you know for, uh, to another all across the world, and they can even I found out they can even uh, these these hackers can even come in and they can they they have the know-how to actually come through your IP address and come into uh, to a location and you or I might be the first people law enforcement would actually go back to to try to track this down and when we we didn't do anything not us but it's come ac all across the uh, all across the world so what this bill does it sets up a process for um, local governments actually in the bill agencies uh, and that's all of our local governments all the agency of the state all the agencies of local governments um, and they're all called agencies in here so it's a process for them to notify our uh, Department of Emergency Management and Homeland Security and report to them uh, these attacks. It sets up the process for them to report what they have reported to the federal government, uh, what they may be required to, to report to the federal government, or anything that they voluntarily report to the federal government. But it also sets up a process for the director of Homeland Security to set up rules and regulations so that, uh, you know, he might want them to report things that were not required by the federal government. It also sets up a process very similar, a little bit different for utilities. And utilities uh, worked with them even more, and uh, they have the same requirement, except that if there's something by federal law or some federal agency tells them not to report to the state government for whatever reason, we've exempted that. Uh, if there's something that federal government uh, says that they can't report to the, the state government, or there's some agency like FBI or Homeland Security at the federal level says, you know, we can't d give this to the state government right now, that would keep them from having to do that. So that's, and I should also say that utilities, um, uh, when a local government, a city, is acting in the in the capacity of a uh, utility, uh, uh, gas municipal association, uh, MEAG, something like that. Then they are treated like a utility, not like a local government or an agency. And um, we've uh, added in here that uh, any reports or records produced pursuant to the, this code section shall not be subject to public inspection or disclosure. But we've also added a subparagraph E that says nothing in this code section shall relieve any agency or utility of any duty that may be exist under law to notify persons impacted by a cyber attack incident, data breach, or identified use of malware, uh, included but not limited to any notice required under Article 34. And I've done that at the request of Madam Chair. We also have a additional language in here that has been uh, requested from the uh, from the Senate, and that's on line 73 through 78, and that says the governor can uh, reach an agreement of uh, memorandum, memorandum of agreement with uh, military command in order to work with our uh, with, with our state agencies to provide education and uh, training and things of that nature. And I'll be glad to go through. I mean, that's pretty much that. Really, is pretty much the bill. I'll be glad to go through any section or any lines that you would you would like for me to. I think you've done a good job of explaining it. Any questions from the committee? Okay, I don't see any questions. And uh, don't see anybody signed up to speak, so uh, what's the will of the committee? Move to pass. Second. Okay, thank you very much. All in favor, raise your hand. Anybody opposed? Okay, thank you, the bill passes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we have one more bill. Representative Chokas was here. He had a run off somewhere for a few minutes. And I'm expecting him back any time. I just sent him a text message. So I would recommend that we stand at ease for five minutes and give him a chance to get back here. And if not, we'll do his bill another day. So we're not adjourned. We're just standing at ease for a few minutes.
Representative Chokas back, so we're gonna come back to order. And uh, as soon as they get their photo op finished, we'll uh, have you at microphone seven. Representative, you want to have a seat at microphone seven would be fine. Or actually six would be better since we don't want Senator Harbison to have to move all his stuff. Okay, catch your breath, catch your breath. We're ahead of schedule, so you're good. Good, thank you. It's hard to catch your breath with these masks on. Those stairs are brutal, I got gotcha. you. But anyway, Madam Chair, thank you. And thank you for your discretion with allowing me to get some more work done. Um, Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, uh, I bring before you today a House Bill 208. The LC number is 470790S. This legislation um, uh, provides for the second Wednesday in February of each year to be designated as National Swearing-In Commitment Day in Georgia. This measure simply creates a day of recognition for our high school ROTC students who choose to join the armed forces. It was modeled after the National Signing Day for high school athletes that accept um, college athletic scholarships. Uh, there was no opposition to this legislation in the House. As a matter of fact, it passed 170 to zero. Um, this measure has no fiscal impact. Um, and it would benefit K-12 education. I feel that it would benefit K-12 education in the state by encouraging high school students to graduate and to participate in the ROTC program, JROTC program and to look at the military for career opportunities. And simply put, that's, that's the measure before y'all, and I'll be happy to answer any questions between the huffs and puffs. <laughs> any questions for Representative Chokas about House Bill 208? Okay, if not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved, you pass. Okay, and second by Senator Anderson. Okay, all in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed? Okay, the bill passes, thank you very much. Thank you, Meeting's Madam adjourned. Chair.